What is up guys and welcome to another Rugby Hemisphere analysis video. Today we'll be looking at four different player performances in the Springboks match against Italy last weekend. Now rather than looking at the bad performances today, I'm going to analyse some of the better showings. Because it's so simple, especially as a Springbok fan in the past two seasons, to grunt on the negatives. And I think, especially in a match like this, where there are some stellar showings by certain players, it will be really good to, to just appreciate that we do have skill in our rugby. And it should be pointed out uh, on occasions where it is deserved. The first person we're going to look at is Francho Venter. His performance on Saturday surprised me the most of the four players we're going to look at. He didn't play uh, as beautiful rugby as he did on Saturday at all during the past season. He's been quite static in terms of performance, not really showing anything special. He made two very good line breaks, made 39 metres over the course of the match, 14 tackles, only two missed. These are statistics that <laughs> sound a lot like Jan Serfontein. And that was exactly, in my opinion, what Coach Alistair Gutzia was looking for uh, in a centre to replace Jan Serfontein uh, in November, in his November test. It's a shame it came late, because I think we could have used that a lot during our, our matches against Ireland and France when Dialende was stalling. Uh, but he's really come to life here. He's reading the ball perfectly from Pollard. And he's finding space, which is exactly how Jan Serfontein plays. And I think that is very important to the Springboks in terms of their stability in the midfield, that ability to, to read the game and play hard physical rugby. And it was really enjoyable to watch, as was the performance of Bongi and Bernambi, who really showed his class and asserted himself as the second choice hooker for South Africa this weekend. He played consistently throughout the match, not making too many errors, 12 tackles, none of them missed. He drove really well in the mall, controlled it just like Malcolm Marks does and really showed us that he needs more game time if he's going to develop a lot as a player. I mean, barely coming off the bench at all in the rugby championship. But uh, he's played exceptionally in this match and um, the way he's been able to, to orchestrate the line out and his throwing's been very good, only a couple of misses. Driving gets off over the line, uh, I remember at one of the tries, and um, you know just playing, playing consistently and doing exactly what was required of him. But as I said, if Bongi Mbanambi is going to progress as a player, he needs more game time. And I can't see Alastair Gutzir with the position that he's in giving this hooker more game time. I think in his situation as a coach, it's all about winning the games now, and that means playing the best players. And I think building depth at the moment is not such a high priority for Alistair Kitsia. And I don't think, as things stand, Bongi and Bernambi is going to progress in the Springbok jersey. He will do very well at uh, Super Rugby, I believe, next season. But has, as it stands, I can't see him progressing much further than he currently is, as much as I would like him to do that. And then there was Warwick Halant. This man, guys, what an exciting talent. His running during his 20 minutes or so at the end of the game was absolutely brilliant to spectate. The way he runs, it's, it's really, really exciting. You see here just bouncing around, trying to find gaps. Absolutely nothing like any of the wingers that have played so far this year. He's trying different things. Racing to, to the ball, communicating there with Paige, trying something new. Every time he got the ball, it seemed that there was danger for the Italian back line. It's a lot like Ben Smith or Israel Dagg and even Lee, uh, Damian McKenzie who was um, trying this type of running. And it's going to be very, very exciting to, to watch him progress up until the next World Cup. And I, I can't see him dropping out of the starting lineup at all uh, as we go into Japan 2019. And last of all, there was Andre Pollard. What a step up he made from his performance against Le Bleu in Paris. His goal kicking was unblemished. He, his kicks were straight and far. He really deserved that man of the match performance. Making line breaks here, setting up the try for Francois Lowe. His kick to Venter 
everything came together perfectly for him in this match. He's really discovered his swagger again, playing like he he did a lot during the Henneke Meyer era. And hopefully giving us something to look forward to in the future with him really coming back and improving himself from that pre-injury World Cup performances where he was nailing every kick and really adding depth to our back line. Uh, that then between youth and experience, remember he's, he's only 23 years old. He's got a long way to go to becoming a Percy Montgomery, Mornay Stain type of figure within the Springboks. I mean, if you compare his performances in this match against Elton's performances in, say, the Ireland match, I know it's against different opposition, but the core structure of the player will remain the same. I did an analysis video about a month ago comparing Yankees and Pollard, and I must say that if you look at the way he played in that match in that last 20 minutes, I sort of thought it had faded a bit when he played against Ireland and definitely in the French match. But in this match, he has shown us that he is absolutely back on track. I, I can't find an, an example of another player that slotted back in after a long-term injury so quickly. Whether that's down to Alistair Kutsia's desperation as his coaching days fade, I don't know. But Pollard is back and we can rejoice in that fact and know that he will be here for many seasons to come as long as injury doesn't plague and especially here today he's run it up, he's demonstrated his real kicking capabilities he made 17 kicks in total, ran 13 meters, made a few half breaks setting up two tries this this is great guys, this is brilliant to have a player like this in your ranks in a time where I mean in the last two seasons we've won so few matches. It's been unreal. It's been so painful to have to sit with a team that in a nation that loves rugby, sitting with a team that just underperforms all the time. And to have players like we've seen in the match against Italy is very encouraging. And we should rejoice in that, as I said in the beginning. We have four players here and a few more. Just mentioned Peter Steph to Toy as well showing himself, Etebet is trying, Fumulum was getting there or thereabouts. So don't lose hope guys. It's so easy, especially in times like this where the results are dreadful, to give up on your team. But trust me with as as I've shown you today, there is there is opportunity and there is talent for us to to progress and improve. And we will one day perform as the force we once were, whether it's with Alistair or not. Well, thanks very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Please do go check out my blog. I do a lot more written articles there and in-depth analysis. Have a look at my other videos as well. I think there's a lot of analysis there that you could find useful. Like and subscribe, and go Boca!